really religion tends to be a verbal hobby rather than <clears throat> putting it to work. In other words, what the Venus Project does is translate all the religious teachings into a way of life. Right. Okay, and uh, you talked about the monetary system. Uh, I, I mean, ideally, if we didn't have any monetary system, it'd be great, but I, I feel like it, it may be a little utopic when you tell people to work, like everybody can work for free, uh, there's no money involved. I feel like nobody would just want to do anything in this society. Um, um, maybe I don't understand your, your, uh, your system, the way you, you, you see it being more optimal. With, the, with regard to, to the monetary aspect. Well, let's check that out, see if it's true. Um, Mahatma Gandhi worked for nothing. Nobody ever gave him any money for what he did. Jesus, Paul, Peter, all the great people, Martin Luther King, they did not do that work because someone promised them great money, a, gr a large amount of money, or a big home. They did it because they believed in what they were doing. I'm always suspicious of people that work for money. When a doctor says your kidney has to come out, I don't know whether he's trying to pay off a new boat or a house or whether my kidney has to come out. It's very difficult in a monetary system to know the intentions of people. They keep using the word spirituality. Well, to me, spirituality means to work for the betterment of all humanity. Otherwise, don't give your lip service to religious teachings. People go to church every weekend and talk about how wonderful things could be. But it's what you do that counts, not what you talk about. So if you're religious, consider this. Jesus said, by their work, ye shall know them. I know a lot of wealthy people, and what you're saying then is if you're born wealthy and you have a lot of money and you don't have to work, then they just sit around and do nothing. But the people I know don't have enough time in the day to do everything they want to do, and they're right, right. terribly wealthy. Also, right. there would be reinforcement for working. There'd be no war, no hunger, no poverty, no homeless, So what? no crime. So those right. are tremendous reinforcements to want to participate in the culture. I think most right. people want to work and participate, but the, the thing that kills incentives is what we have today when you have minimum wage and you have to do dishes all day long and you can't right, bring right. your kids to the dentist or the doctor right, you right, hide right. from work. And so it's, it's really backwards. They give you those values and they give you those things that you recite that are right. against this type of system because they want to keep things as they are. When, when kids come out of school, they're really enthusiastic about doing new architecture and going into science and technology, but yes, they've yes. made cogs on a wheel for a job. Most of them have to go into the military industry scientists because that's where the money is, and they don't really like it. People right. don't like the jobs that they have. They'd rather be exploring new things that would be put immediately into the culture to benefit people so they yes. can see their results. So it's, today we kill that initiative, and you have to remember we don't need everyone to change the earth. We would need about 7,000 technicians to make the earth a, another second Garden of Eden if you're religious. What would the other do, by the way? Well, there's plenty for people to do if they wanted to, like the the elderly might want to work with the young, or they might want to travel, they might want oh, to go back to yes, school, yes. they might want to learn things and participate whatever they want. You know, today you dare not even dream how many kids would want to learn how to fly, but they don't even think about it because it's painful, they don't have the funds, or they right, want right. to go on a cruise and meet other people and learn other cultures and help underdeveloped countries. So there's so much to do if they had the opportunity to do anything they wanted to do. Today the dreams and aspirations are, are just not, not up to what they can be with politicians and this is the world that we get. But if we dreamt and could translate those dreams into, into a working reality, it would be quite different. And yeah, that's the and type of system that we're talking about, an emergent yeah. changing system, one that's not fixed like it is today. Exactly. Don't I, I, I get a good picture of it regarding the environment and the material um, th that you are using and have you already thought of material that are entirely uh, biodegradable uh, at all levels? Bio biodegradable. 
Yeah, well, it's very easy to make uh, materials that will last a long time. And it's very easy to solve most of the problems today. You see, most of the problems are created by human beings. We keep talking about about human beings being the greatest creation of nature. But remember, it's human beings that operate guided missiles. It's human beings that pollute the ocean and the air and the water. It's not technology. It's the misuse and abuse of technology. Okay, that is important to distinguish, yes. And there are no utopias. The utopia is a fixed thing. We, we don't think you can achieve any utopia. The total city system designs that are uh, sustainable and healthy for people to live in are always changing. They'd be a straitjacket for the next generation. So there's no final frontiers. Right, and I, there's already things that we can do. I mean, I know, I know the, 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 the damage that plastic, plastic bags has done on the earth. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, actually even part of, uh, of the, the food chain now as it, it, it just uh, uh, f uh, turns into small pieces in the ocean and then it gets into the, the food chain through the uh, seaweed, through the plant that are eaten by the fish. And I know already organizations that are selling uh, plastic bags that are completely biodegradable. Uh, uh, and then there is like... Um, uh, silverwares and, and, and dishwares that are completely made out of corn, completely uh, recyclable. So I know we already have solution, but I think it comes from, as you say, the, the human race itself has to make the shift, has to, has to make the changes, and uh, especially those who have uh, businesses who, ha who use these, I mean, uh, when you look at, at a bigger scale, big companies that are not uh, thinking uh, green, if we could just uh, inspire people to, to do that shift, I think the, turn, uh, the, the shift would be a little smoother, don't you think? Well, as this system falls, even those big companies are falling, as you can see with, with Circuit City and Home Depot and Ford and Chrysler. So um, we're not advocating to uphold those companies. We're really talking about looking the at the earth as like a city, as like a system, and that can food, they can feed and house and clothe everybody, and doing that the most efficient way, but not have corporations that abuse and put people into subservience. We don't need that anymore. It's a it's a very different type of society that we're talking about. I'm not talking about society run by scientists because they're just the same as anyone else. We use the methods of science for managing the Earth. In other words, the population of the Earth has to be maintained in accordance with the carrying capacity of the Earth, not someone's opinion. So we have to learn how we relate to nature and live in accordance, again, with the carrying capacity of the Earth, not someone's opinion. Yes, to end this interview, I'd like to ask you if, if you would just be giving us like three, three steps. Give us three steps. Well, first begin first with. step is a motion picture to show people what the world can be. Well, I, I would say before that even to look into this project. Get our okay. books and videos because we've done a lot of work on this. There's a okay. recent film called Zygites movie.com okay. that features the Venus Project and we're starting a movement it's the, the Zeitgeist movement yes and what I'd like to add is if we don't accept the responsibility for taking care of the environment one another and the oceans keep them clean then if we fail to do our own thinking others will do our thinking for us and that's called fascism Yes, that is true. Thank you so much, Jack. Well, and thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to present these ideas. Yes. But you can't find it in a, in a half-hour show. You'll have to check on the venusproject.com. Okay. It, and that's where you can find out detailed information about what it is we would like to do. Thank you.